to the political content of the BJP's manifesto. Where does the BJP stand on the Ram Mandir, Article 370 and a uniform civil code? And are there signs of a surprising but welcome change in how the BJP views the minorities and the Muslims in particular? All my guests are with me, but in place of Prakash Javlekar, we're going to be shortly joined by BJP spokesperson Nirmala Sitaraman Bachas. Then let's come to how the BJP will tackle the political crisis India faces. The manifesto says the biggest challenge that India faces today is to restore the credibility of and trust in the union government. Would you agree that that's the biggest challenge? Well, they've said that the biggest channel, uh, challenge is uh, growth and good governance. So I suppose if you take the whole lot together, uh, there, there is a trust deficit with, uh, at, at the moment with the government at, at the center, definitely there is, uh, which is why, uh, which accounts for why uh, Narendra Modi is attracting large crowds to begin with. So I think that this is an issue which needs to be tackled no matter which uh, party comes to power or group of parties. Just as an aside, you pointed out very interestingly that the BJP has identified two biggest challenges, yes. this in politics yeah. and growth yes. in economics. Yes. Although on growth, as we pointed out in part one, they have very little to say beyond That's the right. sentence. That's right. Sticking to this question of the biggest challenge in politics being to restore the credibility and trust of the union government, Gurcharan Das, in tackling this, the BJP talks about drawing expertise from industry, academia and society to open up government, administrative reforms to change the functioning of government from within, and a new concept of Team India which extends beyond the Prime Minister to include Chief Ministers and other functionaries as equals. In this instance, would you say the BJP is clearly thinking along the right lines? Yeah, I think this is perhaps the best part of the manifesto. The focus on governance, the reforms of the governance institutions, and the notion of pushing federalism further, giving more economic power to the states, and more devolution of authority all the way down. And, and I think this is really uh, a good thing. And, and, it, it will, and the idea of having chief ministers also involved in, 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 a, in, a, in a big way as, as, as the idea of Team India is another, I think, a visionary idea okay. uh, which, which, which is, is good. Yeah. You know, when it comes to improving the functioning of government, Mr. Virmani, how much of a change would happen just be through Mr. Modi's personality and his track record for effective, even if some call it autocratic governance? See, my experience, and I've seen this happen in government, as you know, I've been there 20 years. Uh, what happens is you get somebody who uh, is very strong or, or effective and things improve and then when that person leaves they settle down so in my view even more important is the institutional reform which is mentioned in the manifesto and I'm particularly happy about it because I've been talking about it for two decades and I in fact wrote a paper related to uh, it and the institutional ten, reforms a decade are ago. talking about our legal our reforms, police, police reforms, legal reforms in particular. administration e-governance I have a planning commission paper which talks about public accountability information systems. The BJP so has clearly issue. been reading your papers. This is the I, third I don't think anybody has read my paper. This, but is, uh, this, is, this is the third time. I'm happy time. about it. This is the third time with justifiable pride you've mentioned <laughs> how you have thought of what the BJP no, no, wants to do well before they did. This now, is congratulations to you. <laughs> clearly, clearly, Mr. Modi will be knocking on your door to no. ask for details how he should do what you've suggested. I want to pick up with you, Mr. Sita Raman, on something that I find perhaps the most striking of all. It's the contrast between Atal Bihari Vajpayee's manifesto of 98 and Mr. Modi's manifesto of 2014. The 1998 manifesto committed the BJP to one nation, one people, one culture. 2014 says, the party believes in the principle of unity in diversity. The hallmark of India is unity in diversity. The stress on culture is gone. In fact, if you do a word search, even the word culture can't be found in your manifesto. No, it is there. <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is to it most is people there. incredibly striking. Well, I think uh, it is consistent with the arguments that we are placing in terms of strengthening the federal structure, taking states on board, aspirations of people all over the country on board. And therefore, if you're looking at the way in which we've spread our economic and also administrative agenda, as rightly pointed out, we are looking at strengthening inst institutions. No, but, but come back to my point. Yeah. One nation, one people, one culture in 1998, Atal Bihari Vajpayee. Narendra Modi, a very different man, not a Vajpayee, 
And what does he talk about? The party believes in the principle of unity in diversity. But they're not the opposed. The hallmark of India is unity in diversity. Yeah, but they're not opposed to unity. Oh, point it's very view. different to talk about You're one culture. You're still talking of India. Not one culture. You may pick it up like that, but even our constitution, uh, when you talk about a constitution, you still talk I about talk unity about the and diversity. BJP, not the constitution. Yeah, the, the point is, we are all of us who, uh, swearing by the constitution of India, so you will I'm have to accommodate I'm making Nirmala Sitaraman a little embarrassed by pointing out the change <laughs> with Mr. Vajpayee, but let me pursue it with you, Siddharth Vardarajan, because actually, the BJP manifesto goes further. It says, and I quote, BJP believes that in India's unity in diversity, lies India's biggest strength. We cherish the depth and vibrancy that the diversity in Indian society adds to the nation. And then the manifesto adds, BJP is thus committed to the preservation of the rich culture and heritage of India's minority communities. That sounds like Jawaharlal Nehru, not Narendra Modi. There's a very conscious effort uh, by the BJP in this manifesto to project a, uh, a moderate face to remove some of the hard edges that you saw uh, in the texts in 98, even 2009 for example, the kind of language that was used uh, to describe some of these issues, uh, very jarring. I think Mr. Modi has calculated that given the, uh, the manner in which he's presented himself as a person who stands for development only uh, or primarily development, he would rather not clutter the field with anything that is a, a little bit uh, that that's, that's that sounds dissonant when it comes to uh, you know my, the usual accusations the bjp levels can, 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 however can, can, can i interrupt you do can see I interrupt? here and there evidence can, can i interrupt yes. Yes. is it not surprising that modi's manifesto should be the one that revels and celebrates diversity that modi's manifesto should be the one that talks about commitment to the preservation of the rich culture of india's minorities that is, from Mr. Yeah. Modi, it's not, it's not, language and concepts that you yeah. never expected to hear. You see, it's, it's not surprising for the simple reason that were it to say anything else or were it to hark back to even the language of 2009, uh, it, this would be a flaming red rag that would completely derail the main message that he's been pushing for the last three months. All so right. it doesn't surprise me. Even then, having said that, within, this, within the document, there are references here and there which, where you get a sense of what exactly the BJP's agenda is. For example, there's, a t there's an accusation that we stand for unity and diversity, India for all Indians, not like the current situation where you have appeasement for one at the cost of the other. And I would like to ask Nirmala Sita Raman, can she give us an example of well, uh, who is being appeased at whose I'll, I'll, just, I'll come to Nirmala Sita Raman in a moment's time, but I, I, I think, want to I pursue this. I want to to pursue, I'll, I'll come to her and something. give her a chance to clarify, but let me for a moment pursue my thought before yeah. your thought interrupts and hijacks the show. I mean, <laughs> for instance, Siddharth is sanguine he says that anything else in the manifesto would have stood out like a red rag and therefore he says mr modi in a sense had no alternative but to come up with this language but once again i want to suggest that that's not the end of it it goes even further still because the manifesto says of the minorities it's unfortunate that a large section of the minority and especially muslim community continues to be stymied in poverty and when i read that the first thing i was surprised by was the frank acknowledgement of it and secondly i said to myself when you so frankly acknowledge it and specify the muslims as being especially stymied in poverty you're actually laying the ground for special action as well something the bjp finds an anathema yeah well that's why i i use the analogy of the curate's egg this is the good in parts you see because i read this part I mean, okay, we are, given the fact that all manifestos have to be taken with a fistful of salt, they usually molder in some bookshelf after the government is sworn in. The fact remains is there's a whole sheaf of proposals which the manifestos uh, talks about for Muslims in particular. Yes, absolutely. You know, and uh, this I have not seen in a BJP manifesto before. So you then agree with me yeah, that I, this I, is I, a surprising I, I, new face. Let me say that, that I am... I am skeptical, but I, I cannot continue to be skeptical. I have to believe what I read. And, and this is what I read and I believe they, if, if this is not implemented, quite obviously the BJP government will be called into question. People so will say that you printed this and you're not sticking to it. And so not, only, not only printing it, <laughs> today you had Mr. Modi and Mr. Rajnath Singh, both of them saying we are committed to everything that which is said and we will ensure that they are fulfilled. Can I, can, I, can I put this to you? When you say in your manifesto 
that large sections of the minority continue to be stymied in poverty and then you add especially the Muslim community most people would say that is the basis for special action for Muslims not necessarily but when the Sanchar committee came up not necessarily and that is where I would want to underline it's one thing to uh, you know uh, say oh therefore there's a need the way in which Modi or BJP's governments are functioning without discrimination ensuring that every scheme that is launched for the welfare of the people of the uh, states concerned they reach out and they ensure that it uh, reaches the targeted audience there need not be a differentiation when you're implementing a scheme if only your developmental goals are spread in such a way that no section gets ignored this will be applicable everywhere and mm -hmm. therefore particular backwardness will be addressed the, all right let me put it like this one of the concerns that people have and I imagine this applies to investors both in India and abroad is what will happen to India's sectarian communal relations under Mr. Modi. Do these sentences, committing the party to the richness of minority culture, recognizing that the minorities often are stymied in poverty and the Muslims in particular, would they be reassuring to investors? Would they suggest yeah. that perhaps Mr. Modi is not going to be a red, a, 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 a bull in a china shop. See again, you, you know, to me it is not surprising because I believe in incentives and objectives. What people don't seem to trust is Indian democracy. I have a faith in democracy and what that means is if a party wants to be a majority party and rule for 10 years or 15 years, it has to move to the center. So it is not, to me, it's not a question of X is a good person and Y is a bad person. It's a question of incentives and motivation. That's right. one thing. Secondly, on, on the minorities, you know, I actually once did a study. Ah, on once again, Mr. Modi's taken a leaf out of your book. Not at all. It was never published for once. <laughs> on backward... He uh, may be telepathic. On backward areas, what I found was that the, there's an association. You know, when, I, when you put SC, STA and Muslims, it turns out as a factor. But if you add certain other, uh, you know, it's connected with their occupations, right. except for STs. So STs are actually a special group. The others is more related to their occupations and what they do. So in fact, if you uh, do overall development, the last two will benefit uh, right. from that development.